Hi, welcome to Wanik Science. This video on cell transport focuses on diffusion and membranes. Up until now we've considered cells to be rather complex systems of specialized cell parts called organelles. And all these combine together to provide function much like a factory. In the same way that a factory imports raw materials and then exports products and wastes, a cell too must, con must transport materials across the membrane. So in this unit you'll explore how membranes manage cell transport while still maintaining homeostasis. To introduce this idea, pause the video and answer the questions below, making sure especially to define the term selective permeability. Okay, so consider a sugar cube that's dropped into a beaker of water. The water dissolves the sugar cube into smaller particles that collide with one another and spread out until there is an even distribution of sugar within the water. This mixture is called a solution and it's made of really just two components. The substance that's being dissolved is known as the solute, whereas the solvent is the substance that's doing the dissolving. The resulting solution reaches an even distribution point called equilibrium. The process just described is overall called diffusion, the movement of particles from an area of high concentration to an area of lower concentration. And in short, it can be said that sugar molecules are diffusing down their concentration gradient from high concentration to low concentration until they reach equilibrium. Based on your understanding thus far, consider how diffusion interacts with a selectively permeable membrane. Identify the two environments listed side A and side B. Notice that they're separated by a membrane permeable to both molecules C and D. So pause the video and respond to the three questions below. Okay, so time for some answers. Because molecule C is more concentrated on side A, it will diffuse across the membrane to side B until it reaches equilibrium. The molecules will continue to move across the membrane when equilibrium is reached, but will only do so to maintain the relative concentrations. If molecule C is impermeable to the membrane, then only molecule D will be allowed to move across and will establish an equilibrium on its own concentration gradient. The result will be an equal concentration of molecule D on both sides, but molecule C will only stay on side A. So in the same way that this membrane allows molecules to move from one side to another, the plasma membrane serves to control the movement of materials between the cytoplasm and the external environment of the cell. Materials from the external environment, such as oxygen, water, and food particles, they move inward, while waste products and carbon dioxide move outward. Cells really have to control the transport of materials across the plasma membrane simply to maintain homeostasis. Without this controlled movement, cells simply die. To summarize cell transport as a whole, you could say a selectively permeable membrane simply admits or it will block different particles diffusing down their concentration gradient. Though the statement is true, it does very little actually to differentiate the complexity of biological membranes from a simple screen door. So what makes a membrane different than a screen door? Well the answer comes down to the core of the membrane itself, the two parts of a phospholipid. The two fatty acid tails are nonpolar and hydrophobic, which means they repel water. The phosphate head is polar and hydrophilic, meaning it's attracted to water. And because these two regions interact with water in opposite ways, the tails are pushed away from the water and the head is attracted to the water. So when sandwiched into two layers, the phosphate heads face the water environments outside and inside of the cell. The hydrophobic fatty acid tails are tucked toward the inner region of the membrane itself, shielded away from the water. In this way, water is excluded from the inner portion of the membrane and will not freely move across. So the internal cytoplasm is functionally separated from the external environment. But don't think the membrane is impenetrable. Many molecules do in fact move across the membrane. Molecules that are small and nonpolar, such as oxygen and carbon dioxide, move across the membrane easily in a process called diffusion. Larger molecules, 
such as carbohydrates or polar molecules like water, don't move across the membrane very well at all. Instead, they need some help. These molecules require the use of transport proteins to bridge the two environments in a process known as facilitated diffusion. So together, the phospholipids, transport proteins, and other membrane components form a rather responsive and dynamic perimeter for the cell. Membranes are flexible and fluid-like, rather than sheets of molecules simply locked together in a rigid structure. Most of the proteins drift around freely as if they were icebergs floating around in a sea of phospholipids, if you will. So take some time and sketch the membrane, including the transport proteins. Make sure to label the hydrophobic and the hydrophilic regions. And when you've done that, based on your understanding of the phospholipid bilayer, respond to the reflection questions below. I hope this video has been helpful.